Okay, let's start. And I'll begin with greeting you all first with a good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So before we proceed, as you all know, we're going to start with a prayer, okay? So may I ask Sky Mendoza to lead us in prayer? Sky, nap. Mom. Okay, do it now. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please guide us in our decisions to make. Give us strength and knowledge and keep us and our loved ones safe and warm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Sky. Okay. So let us proceed with our lesson. I hope you will enjoy our session for the day. Okay. So as you all know, just like with our previous sessions, we always begin with our week's agenda or today's agenda because at the end of the lesson you must be able to obtain this class or object objectives okay can you please read this samantha De determine the different properties of a parallelogram okay thanks next jillian Use properties to find measures of angles, sides, and other quantities involving parallelogram. Okay, and lastly, let's have Phoebe. Appreciate the importance of properties of parallelogram in real. Okay, I forgot to type in their life, okay? The third objective is appreciate the importance of properties of parallelogram in real life. So at the end of our session today, you must achieve all of these objectives, okay? So let us now proceed. So let us have a short review of our discussion or topics that you have discussed when you were in grade eight, okay? So we'll have to play the words involving four peaks and one word. And this time, let me show you this. If you want to answer, just raise your hand. Okay, Michelle, what's your answer? Point, ma'am. Okay, the answer here is point. Okay, right? When you were in grade eight, point was discussed, right? And it is one of the undefined terms in geometry. Point means no size, no depth, and no width. It is simply a location, okay? And then next, let's have this. Okay, Jillian raises her hand first. Line four. Okay, very good. This pictures shows us a line. And a line is also one of the undefined terms in geometry. Okay, next. What do we mean by line? Since it is undefined, it is just simply, the, the definition of a line is just simply based on its description. So a line is made up of points that extends on both sides okay next how about this okay jillian raised her hand how about the others um, okay nathaniel royo shape or Okay, thank you. Very good. That's correct. The answer here is shape. Okay, shape. Okay, so we'll focus now on shape. What kind of shape are we going to discuss for this day or today? And before we proceed with that shape, 
let us now have these pictures. What I want you to do is to describe it and tell me the details about it. Okay, this is the per first picture that we have. Can you tell me what do you see? I know you miss this place. Okay, Jeff, what's your answer? Um, our school building, ma'am. Okay, it is one of our school building and it is named as the Inares Building. Okay, thank you for that. Next picture. Michelle? A sink, ma'am. A sink, or this is the newly installed washed area in our school, okay? This is also installed in for the prevention of the spread of the coronavirus, okay? Next, we have here. How many of you visited this place? Can you tell me what is this? Hannah? Library, mom. Okay, it's the school library, right? Okay, and next, another picture. Jillian. Canteen. Okay, our school cafeteria or the canteen. Very good. And last picture. Jeff? Um, school classrooms po. Okay, school classroom. This was the classroom of grade 8 and grade 7 laboratory. Okay, to be exact. Okay, now I want you to tell me what does these pictures have in common? Do they have something in common? Aside from they are the our school facilities or they are the place where students gather in our school what do they have something in common yes hannah mom they have different shapes mom okay they all have different shapes and what shape is common in these five pictures Square and rectangle, ma'am. Square and rectangle. Okay, thank you for that answer. So, as we can notice, all of these five pictures represents a shape, okay? And they are all present around our school, right? So, with that, we can simply say that quadrilaterals are really around us, right? Not just living things, but also quadrilaterals, okay? According to Hana a while ago, she said that rectangle and square were the most common shapes that we have seen in those five pictures, okay, right? So, and rectangle and square based from our lesson last week is a quadrilateral, right? So therefore, I want you all to turn on your camera and as I have noticed, it is already turned on. I want you to look for objects inside your house that has four sides or four corners. Hold it with you and we will do a screenshot or a selfie. Let's see. Okay. May nakikita na akong nagtataas ng kanilang mga objects. Okay. Okay. Let me do a screenshot for a while. Okay, for a while. So Michelle and Andriana and Sky were already shown their objects. Screenshot, okay, let's have that. And Lastly, let's have Phoebe, Samantha, and 
charts. Okay, thank you for participating. Okay, you can now put your objects. Now, what I want to ask right now, let's say, if you will extend one corner, what do you think will happen to the object that you have raised? If you extend one corner, one side, would it still be a quadrilateral, Michelle? Yes, ma'am, but it changes a shape, the shape. Okay, at some point, it is still a four-sided polygon or a four-sided object, but it changes its shape. So that it's what we will expound on today, okay? So again, what is a polygon with four sides? Hannah? Quadrilateral, ma'am. Okay, a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. Thank you for that. Okay. And based from our lesson last time, I have shown you the family tree of quadrilaterals, right? So these are some of the classifications or kinds of quadrilaterals that have been discussed before. So we have here, can you enumerate the types of quadrilaterals that we have? Jeff, can you enumerate them all? Parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, square, trapezoid, and isosceles trapezoid. Um, okay. Isosceles, okay, isosceles trapezoid and kite. So uh, there are six kinds of quadrilaterals that we have discussed last time. Okay, so this time we will focus on one classification of quadrilateral, and that is the parallelogram. Okay. So we will have a parallelogram. Can you define what a parallelogram is? Can anyone define a parallelogram based from its root word? What is the root word of parallelogram? Okay, Royo, what is the root word? Parallel po. Okay, thank you. Yes, the root word for parallelogram is parallel. Okay, simply because its definition tells us that it is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, you know the definition. It has been discussed last time, but we will now focus on the different properties of parallelogram. Okay, so... Let's have this. Andriana, please read property number one. Opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Okay, thank you. Opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Do you have any question about this property? Is there any confusion with words here? Okay, so... That means, since you do not have something to ask, I want to ask you, what do we mean by the word congruent? Michelle. Parehas po yung measurement nila. Okay, when we say congruent, it means they are of equal measure, okay? So let's have our figure. I have here parallelogram A, B, C, and D, okay? You can name a parallelogram by naming it based on the, num uh, on the name of its corners or its points. So this parallelogram here is named as parallelogram A, B, C, D. You can name a parallelogram by naming it clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? You can start at any point, then follow the procedure of a clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? I hope that is clear to you. So what do we mean by opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent? 
Can you give me a pair of opposite sides here? Jeff, that was fast, huh? Mom, A, D, and B, C, po. Come again? A, D, and B, C, po. A, B, and D, C. That is correct. So if we will put into symbol the statement opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent, it is now like this. A, B is congruent to D, C. Okay, let me read that properly again. The symbol, the line above AB is, we read that as segment or line segment AB is congruent to segment DC, okay? This symbol here is the symbol for congruent, okay? Take note of that. Next, we have another pair of of opposite sides that are congruent is segment AD congruent to segment BC. Okay? Is that clear? Uh, Michelle, can you tell us again what do we mean by congruent? Parehas po a measurement. Okay, thank you. Again, congruent means they have equal measures. Okay, so with this, if AB is 10, what do you think is DC? Jillian. 10 po. Okay, so segment DC is also 10, right? Because AB is congruent to DC. Therefore, they have the same measurement. EC, right? Next. If BC is seven, what do you think is AD? Charles? Seven po. Okay, it is also seven. Okay, next time, answer with in a complete sentence. Okay, BC, segment BC, uh, rather segment AD measures seven units. Actually, there were no units mentioned, so you will just simply write units, okay? Since we're talking about measurement, there should be a unit of measure, but, there's none in, but there is no indicated unit of measure used, so you will just simply write units. Is that clear? Can I hear a response? Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, okay, thank you. Next. Still on property number one, if ABCD is a parallelogram and segment AB is 2x plus 15 and DC equals 3x minus 11, find AB. Okay, I'm giving you 30 seconds or one minute. Let's see if you can answer this without my guidance, just with the idea that opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Okay, Michelle? 5x plus 4 po, ma'am. 5x plus 4, that's you think is the measurement of AB. Okay, nice try. But that is wrong, I'm sorry. Who has another answer? Okay, the secret here to find the measurement of AB is you need to look for the value of x first in obtain in order to obtain the value of ab take note that the opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent okay charles mom 16 po 16 okay almost correct but it is still wrong try again
again, you need to look for the value of x first in order to find the value of AB. Sixty-seven po. Sixty-seven. Okay. Samantha, can you show us your solution, Kaya? Can you annotate with us? You can write on our screen. Annotation is now available. Can you do it? Because your answer is correct. Okay. Yes, x is 26. Thank you. And therefore, what is AB? Are you done? Okay, let me show it to you properly, okay? So this is what happened. Okay, thank you, Samantha. Your answer is correct. Very good. The answer is 67. Take note that it says here in property number one that opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Therefore, we can say that AB segment AB is congruent to segment DC, right? And according to Michelle, when we have, when we say congruent, they have equal measure. So therefore, segment AB is equal to segment DC, okay? And the value of AB based on the problem is 2x plus 15. So all you have to do is to substitute it or replace 2x plus 15 with AB, and the same with DC for 3x minus 11. Then I know you are familiar on how to solve this. All you have to do is to use the addition property of equality or your favorite, you just simply transpose one term to the other side. So we'll have here 3x minus 2x is equal to 15 plus 11. 3x minus 2x is x, and 15 plus 11 is 26. I told you a while ago that you have to look for the value of x first in, of, in order to obtain the value of ab, okay? So with that, since we have x now, we can say that ab which is equal to 2x plus 15, use this to substitute the value of x, which is 26, just like what Samantha has shown us, 15. So 2 times 26 is 52 plus 15, and your answer is 67 units, okay? The value or the length of AB is 67 units. Do you have any concerns or question about this one? Hello? Is this clear to you now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's proceed with another one. So we have here a parallelogram, property number two, four, parallelogram okay so let us have number two I would like to answer a uh, read rather Charles can you please read this 
Opposite angles of parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so in number one, we are talking about opposite sides. This time, we're talking about opposite angles. Let's have our figure again. Okay, we still have parallelogram A, B, C, D. Can you give me a pair of an opposite angle here? Jeff? Um, angle A, D, C and angle A, B, C, ma'am. Okay, that is correct. So see si Jeff, he named the angle using three letters. You can name an angle using three letters or one letter, okay? So in my example, I'll just give you angle A is congruent to angle C. This is just the same with what Jeff has have mentioned, okay? And another pair would be angle D and angle B. Okay, to show you that they are congruent, you can label your figure, okay? So it says there that angle A, you can draw an arc, is congruent to angle C. There you go. And angle B is congruent to angle D. Can you see, can you not, did you notice something about the way I put a label in our angles? As you can notice, they do not have the same number of arcs, right? Why do you think they do not have the same number of arcs? Jeff, again. Um, because only opposite angles are congruent now. Okay. Simply because opposite angles are congruent. They do not have the same number of arcs to indicate that all four angles do not have the same measure. But there are instances that they could be of the same number of arcs. But it doesn't work with parallelograms, okay? So with that, if angle D is 80 degrees, what do you think is the measurement of angle B? Michelle? 80 degrees then po. Okay, thank you. Because angle D is congruent to angle B, meaning to say that the measurement of angle B is also 80 degrees, okay? The unit of measure used is a degree. Okay, next. If angle A is 110, what do you think is the measurement of angle C? Okay, Jillian? 110 degrees still. Okay, it is also 100. 10 degrees. The measurement of angle C is also 110 degrees. Okay? Simply because the angle A and angle C are congruent. Okay? Thank you, everyone. And another example for the same property is this. If angle B is 3x plus 11, and angle D measures 5x minus 9, what do you think is the measurement of angle B? Take note, opposite angles of parallelograms are congruent, and angles B and D are opposite angles. So what do you think is the measurement of angle B? Okay, I'm giving you time to solve it. Jeff? Mom, 41, mom. 41. Okay, what is the value of your X? 10 po. Okay, can you annotate? Can you show us your work? 
Try ko po, ma'am. Wait. Okay. Let me allow annotation first. Okay. Work on the empty spot there. Okay, Jeff is correct, huh? That the value of x is 10. Therefore, the measurement of angle D is 41 degrees. Let us see his work first. And how did he obtain the answer? Are you annotating now, Jeff? Yes po, ma'am. Yes po, yes po. Okay, okay. It doesn't show on the screen now. Ayan, okay. We, na we now see it. Okay, very good. And how about, how did you get the value of angle D? Okay, so Jeff, can you explain your work to your classmates, to us? Uh, Ma'am Trina, expose ko lang po yung ano, para po maging parehas po sila para ma... <laughs> okay, don't be shy, just go on. Explain it properly. Ma'am, nag-transpose po ako, tapos sinold ko po yung each equation para makuha yung um, x po. Tapos po, uh, sinubstitute ko po yung value ng x dun sa equation ng angle D po para makuha okay. po yung measurement. Okay, thank you for that. So, let me clear his annotation and let me show it to you clearly. Very good, Jeff. Nice work. Um, let me show you how it's done clearly, okay? His work is right, but let us clearly write it here. As you all know, angle B is congruent to angle D. Therefore, angle B is equal to the measurement of angle D. And angle B is given by the value of 3x plus 11 equals to the value of angle D, which is 5x minus 9, right? And then, according to Jeff, which he said that nagtranspose po siya. So 5x minus 3x is equals to 11 plus 9, okay? So 2x equals 20, and then you apply, the, you divided both sides by 2, x now is equal to 10. To get the value of angle D, which is equals to 5x minus 9, just replace x with 10. So 5 times 10 minus 9 is equal to 5 times 10, 50 minus 9. The measurement of angle D is 41 degrees. Okay? Right? If our property number one is all about opposite sides, this time it is about opposite angles, but the method on how you get the answer are just the same since they're talking about congruency. Okay, thank you, Jeff. I hope this one is clear to you. Do you have any question with this? Hello. Hello. Okay, thanks. So let's proceed with another property. And the third property is consecutive angles of parallelogram are supplementary. 
Do you have any idea what do we mean by the word consecutive? Michelle? Yung magkasunod po na uh, angle po ay nag equal po sila sa 180 degree. Okay, derecho explanation, that is correct. Because when we say supplementary, the sum of these angles are equal or equal to 180 degrees. Okay, yung magkasunod daw na angles ay equal to 180 degrees. So let's have our figure. Who can give me a pair of consecutive angles? Same people, how about the others? Jillian, go, push. Angle A is congruent to, ay mali pala, <laughs> ulit ma'am. <laughs> okay, push. Angle A is supplementary to angle B. Okay. Po, angle D is, super, uh, is supplementary to angle C. Okay, so, okay, you gave me a right pair of consecutive angles, right? But it does not read that way, okay? But good job, Julian. It is read, if you are going to put consecutive angles are of parallelogram are supplementary into symbol, ito ang sinabi ni Julian. Since supplementary means the sum of two angles is 180, ito po siya into symbol. Angle A plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? And we have another one, another pair. Actually, we have four pairs here. Angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Okay? So next, who can give me another pair of consecutive angles that are supplementary here? Michelle? Angle, um, angle A plus angle D is equal to 180 degree. Okay, so para hindi kayo nahihirapan mag-pronounce, it is pronounced as angle, not angle, okay? It is not an angel, okay? It is an angle, okay? Angle, she said angle B plus angle A is equal to 180 degrees. That is correct. Very good. Another pair. Who would like to give me another pair of angles? Michelle mentioned of angle B plus angle A. Who else? Jeff? Um, angle D and angle C. Okay, thank you. So we have here angle C plus angle B is equals to 180 degrees. And Angle D plus angle A is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, my question is, if you know that the measurement of two of consecutive angles in a parallelogram measures 180, what do you think is the sum of all measures of all angles found in a parallelogram? Meaning to say, ano po ang total ng lahat ng angles sa paralelogram pag pinagsama-sama mo sila. Jillian? 360 degrees po. Okay, thank you. That's correct. Very good. Okay, angle A and angle B forms 180 degrees. And angle D... And angle C also forms 180 degrees. So with that, 180 plus 180 is equal to 360 degrees. Okay? So let's uh, let this is my next question. If angle A is 120 degrees, what is the measurement of angle B?
three participants raise their hand. Let me see who are they. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Hannah. Mom, 60 degree. Okay. Angle B measures 60 degrees. That's correct. Very good. How about angle C? Let us have, Royo, do you have an answer? Hindi ko pa pong makita. Ah, hindi mo pa, hindi pa visible sa screen mo. Okay, let's now have, let me see who raised their hands for a while. Okay, Jeff. Um, 120 rin po. Okay, it is equal to 120 degrees okay and angle d hannah 60 degrees ma'am. okay thanks that's correct 60 degrees label nyo para hindi kayo malito pwede nyo label nyo figure nyo so 120 60 Okay, kahit hindi gamitin yung idea na consecutive angle, since angle A and angle C are opposite angle, therefore, this is also 120 degrees. Babalikan mo lang din yung mga previous properties. And this is also 60 degrees. Mahirap po ba? Ipo. Okay, di ba? Sobrang dali. All you have to do is to understand these properties well. Okay, so... Let's proceed with another example for property number three. There we go. If angle A measures 9x plus 15 and angle B measures 6x plus 15 degrees, what is angle B? Okay. I'm giving you... A minute to solve it. Just raise your hand whenever you have the answer. Michelle. 33 degrees po, ma'am. Okay. Nice try, but it's not the answer that I am looking for. Again, I gave you the, the, what do you call this? The solution to the problem or the representation or the symbol. All you have to do is to apply it or substitute it there. Again, all you have to do is to solve for x first before you give the value of angle B. Andriana, what's your answer? 75 degrees po, ma'am. Okay, that is also not the answer to this problem. Thank you for trying. Okay. Okay, Jillian commented on our chat box, but it is not also our answer. Okay, so with that, let me show you the solution, all right? So from the solution or from the statement consecutive angles of parallelogram are supplementary, we can say that measure of angle A and angle B is equal to 180 degrees, right? Yan po yung symbol na meron tayo kanina. And then, ah, ah yes. That's right. May napa-oo nga na dyan. Okay. Angle A is 9x plus 15. 
plus the measurement of angle B, which is 6x plus 15, okay, is equal to 180 degrees. And then on the left side of the equation, all you have to do is to combine like terms. And that is 9x plus 6x. What is the answer to that? 9x plus 6x. Who can give me the answer? Jillian, okay. Your answer? Yes, okay. 15x. And then 15 plus 15 is 30 which is equal to 180 degrees, okay? And then next, just simply transpose 30 to the other side of the equation and you will have 15x equals 180 minus 15. 15x is equal to 100, sorry, this should be 30, okay? 150. 180 minus 30 is 150, then divide both sides by 15. 150 divided by 15, the value of x is now 10. Okay, may value na po tayo ng x. Who can show the how, the, what is the value of angle B if the value of x is 10? Who can give me now the answer to that? Jeff. 75 degrees po, ma'am. Are you sure? Yes, po, ma'am. Ah, yes, it's angle B. I'm sorry. So, who answered 75 a while ago? I'm sorry. I was looking at angle A. May nakapagbigay na pala ng sagot na tama kanina. Okay, bear with me, please. Okay, that is correct. The measurement of angle B, I think that was Andriana who gave 75 degrees. Tama ba, Andriana? Opo, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for that kanina, ha? You're correct pala. So, angle B is 6x plus 15. So, therefore, replace 6, x with 10. Therefore, we have 60 plus 15, and angle B measures 75 degrees. Okay? Okay, Andriana was correct a while ago. If angle B is 75, what is the measurement of angle A? Jeff? 105 degrees po, ma'am. Okay, 105 degrees. You can simply subtract 180 minus 75 to get angle A, or you can substitute 10 also with angle A here. Okay, and you will get 105 degrees. Okay? So with that, let us now go to joinmyquiz.com and use the code of 297-698. Let's have a short activity with regards to the three um, problems that we have a while ago or properties. So... Let me give you a new share and go to my screen. Okay. So, please use the code. This code, okay? I'm waiting for participants now. 297-698. Okay, two were already in. Five. We are still waiting for five more. The code is two nine seven six nine eight. This activity is all about the three properties that we have discussed already. Two nine seven six nine eight. Okay, we're waiting for one more. Okay, we are now complete. So let me push start or 
click start and we'll have the quiz. Okay? Okay, Jeff is already done. Three were already done. Okay, we're still waiting for three more to finish their work. Okay, we're waiting for Phoebe and Royo to finish their work. Okay, and Royo is almost done. So those who are done, you can go back to my presentation to see the ranking now. Okay. Let's just wait for Royo. Okay, Royo is already done. So with that, let me end this task, okay? Let us see the result. Okay, first, you can now go back to our presentation in, in Zoom. First is Jeff, second is Michelle, and third one is... Jillian Tayaktak. Okay, thank you so much for that. Wait lang. Let me see the if how many got a perfect score. Okay, eight out of ten got a perfect score. That's very good. Okay. Royo and Roa only got an incorrect answer with number question number four. But nonetheless, this is an, a very good result. Okay, thank you everyone for participating. Let us now proceed with the next two properties that for parallelograms. Okay, next property for parallelogram. Sky, can you please read this? The diagonals of para parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, what is the new word to you here? Ano ang bagong salita na gusto ninyong malaman ang definition? Anyone? Can anyone tell me the def what do we mean by the word bisect? Michelle? 
Nagsalubong po. Okay. Bisect means somehow we can uh, say that nagsalubong but the nagsalubong means nag-intersect. Bisect means when these diagonals bisect each other, they were equally divided into two. Okay? So as you can see, we have a new figure here now. It is still parallelogram A, B, C, D. Can you name the diagonals found in this figure? Name the diagonals found in this figure. It's Michelle again. How about the others? Michelle, how many diagonals are there in a, paral in a quadrilateral? Eight po, ma'am. Wow, that's many. <laughs> Six okay. po. It's still wrong. Thank you for oh. trying, but I know you are just confused. Okay, Jillian. Jillian? Oh. What's your answer? Four. Four? It is still no. There are only two diagonals for parallelogram. Okay? Okay, so since there are only two diagonals for a parallelogram, can you tell me now what are those diagonals in this figure? Jeff? Ma'am, A, C, and B, D po. Okay, very good. A, C, and B, D are the diagonals of parallelogram A, B, C, D. Okay? And as you can notice, A, diagonals A, C, and B, D here intersected at point E. Ito po yun. Right? Since they bisect each other, meaning to say, si B, D was equally divided into two equal parts. That is why we have one, a mark here, one, and one to indicate that this segment and this segment are congruent, okay? So AE and this one is also congruent with this one. So as you can notice, congruent to AE and AC and on the other side we have DE is congruent to EB. Ngayon, my question is, is AC congruent to BD based on the figure equal measure po ba si diagonals AC and BD? Jillian, are they equal? Hindi po. Okay, very good. They are not equal. As you can see, based from the figure, Segment BD is longer than segment EC. Therefore, the halves of these diagonals are also not congruent. Okay? So with that, let's have this question. If DE is 7, what is EB? If DE is 7 unit, how long is segment EB? Who raised their hand? Michelle? Seven din po. Seven din po. That is correct. How about segment DB? Jeff? I'm 14. Okay, that is correct. EB? Okay. So that is correct, right? I have a malfunction here with my pentab, okay? EB is seven units and DB, which is the diagonal itself, is 14 units long, okay? Okay, next. 
If AC is 10, how long is AE and EC? Okay, ang bilis magtataas ng kamay. Let me see other hands muna. Nathaniel Royo. How long is AE? Five po. Okay, thank you. AE is five and EC, therefore, EC is also five units. Okay? Very good, everyone. Okay. Next. Ito naman. If AE is 3x plus 3 and EC is equals to 4x minus 4, how long is AC? Again, AE and EC were both parts of segment AC. Okay? Use the idea that we have just followed in the previous two examples in order for you to find the value of AC. Andriana, what's your answer? Ma'am, eight po. Eight? I'm sorry, it is not eight. Jeff? Mom, 48 po. Okay. The value of AC is 48. Okay. Jeff, I'll be writing the solution. Can you care to explain it to us? Okay. okay. So, AE is congruent to EC. Right? While I'm writing, Jeff, can you please explain what should i do next mom transpose po okay we have to transpose the terms that are alike and x here is equal to what jeff seven po okay seven so seven next step that jeff did was to substitute 7 to 3x plus 3. And what did you get, Jeff, here? 24 po. Yes, 24. Because 3 times 7 plus 3, AE is 24. Right? Now, how did you get 48, Jeff? Dahil po yung AE and EC is congruent. Pares po silang 24. So pinag-add ko lang po sila. Okay, that is correct. I hope everyone gets that, no? Since according to Jeff, that AE is 24 and it is called congruent to EC, which is also 24, in order for him to get AC, all he has to do is 24 plus 24 is 48, giving us the measurement of AC, which is equal to 48 units. Very good, Jeff. Nice work. Okay? Ganun lang po siya kadali. I know some of you are still confused, pero as practice, you can also do it. Okay? Next and last property. There are only five properties of parallelogram. And it says here that each diagonal of parallelogram forms two congruent triangles. Okay? I have parallelogram ABCD and I have diagonal AC. Can you see two triangles that were formed? Can I hear a response? Oh. Yes. Can you name these triangles? Okay. Two people raise their hand. Michelle, name the triangles. Triangle ABC and triangle ABC Puma. Okay. I named it Okay. 
triangle ACB is congruent to triangle CAD. Okay, it is not part of the lesson of our lesson yet for yet on how to name a triangle based on their congruency sa mga later part pa po yan ng third quarter, but we will discuss. So for now, we have here triangle ACB is congruent to triangle CAD. And another diagonal is also drawn, which is diagonal BD. Can you name the triangle that are congruent here? Jeff. Um, triangle DBA and triangle DCB. Okay, thank you. So we have triangle DBC is congruent to triangle BDA. Just like what I've mentioned with parallelogram, you can also name triangle based on their vertices. So alam ko ganun muna kayo nagpapanganan. Pero once we reach triangle in our lesson by maybe two weeks from now, Will be able to you'll be able to name a triangle based on their congruency okay so with that that's all about the properties of parallelogram that we have discussed today and before we proceed can you describe what you see here in the picture anyone Is my screen still visible to you? Are you familiar with this picture? Yes, Michelle. Rectangular po yung shape. Yeah. Okay, we have a signage here that is a rectangular figure. And based on our lesson last week, would you consider a rectangle a parallelogram? Michelle? Yes po, ma'am, kasi po may four sides po siya. Okay, not just with four sides only, but because it has two pairs of parallel sides. Good job. Okay, now, where can you see this figure in our school? Hana. School covered court, po, ma'am. Yes, it is stated already there that it is the covered court. Visible po ito sa ating covered court. Now, this is the problem that I want you to answer. Okay? I'll give plus points to anyone who can answer here. The given is that the upper part of the, re the rectangular signage is 3x minus 5 feet. The left side is 2y minus 7 feet. Lower x plus 7 feet and right part is y plus 3 Fit. How long is the upper and the lower side of the signage that is found in our covered court? Okay, once you have the answer, you can give it to me. The question only asked there was how long is the upper and the lower side? or lower part of the signage. Since this is a rectangle, even if it is a rectangle and a rectangle is considered a parallelogram, we can still apply the properties of parallelogram for this figure. Okay, Jeff already raised her hand, his hand. Let us wait. Maybe other people can answer. Wait lang, Jeff, ha? Okay. Okay, Jeff, I guess you can give it a try. Go. 
Ma'am, yung upper part and lower part po, ang measure po nila is 13 feet po. Both are 13 feet? Yes po. What is the value of X that you obtain? X po. Okay, that is correct. Okay, so since we are just asking for the upper and the lower part of the signage, all we have to do is use the upper part and the lower part given. So that is given by 3x minus 5 and x plus 7. And what property of the parallelogram did you use, Jeff, in order to answer this? One, two, Ma three, opposite four, sides or five. Are growing po. Okay, that's property number one. That is correct. Opposite sides are congruent. Very good. Okay. 3x minus 5 is equal to x plus 7. And then next, transpose or addition property of equality. And you'll have 7 plus 5. 2x is equal to 12. And x divide both sides by 2. And you'll have 6. And since we're asking for the length of the upper and the lower part, just get 1, which is the upper part represented by 3x minus 5, upper part po ito, replace x or substitute 6 to x, and you will have 18, 3 times 6, 18 minus 5 is, the upper part is 13. And since according to Jeff, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, therefore, the lower part is also 13 feet. Okay? Any question? My confusion po ba about this topic? Hello? Are you still there? Is there any confusion po? Hello po. <laughs> okay, I hope this is clear to you. Okay? Napakadali lang niya, right? All you have to do is to identify or analyze the given and then apply the different properties. Okay? So with that, apply na natin lahat ng natututunan na natin today via quiz again. Go to joinmyquiz.com followed by use the code 358-855. Okay? 358-855. Okay? Okay, four were joined. Last one. Okay, we're now complete. I'm going to click start in five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, some were still not answering.
Okay. The, the changes in ranking is still visible on our screen right now and it keeps on changing, okay? Right now, the, our leader is Michelle Mendoza. This is the questions given there were all about the different properties of parallelograms, okay? Okay, we're still waiting for, uh, sorry for that noise. We're still waiting for four more students to finish their tasks. And to those who were done, you can see the ranking right now, okay? We're just waiting for Reyes and Hippolito to finish. Oh, Andreana just finished her work. Okay. Last three questions for Hippolito. Maybe there's a problem with Phoebe's internet connection. That's why it's still not changing here. Are you done, Phoebe? Ma'am, okay lang po ba? Pag-proceed na po kayo. Naghang po kasi. Ah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for informing us. Okay, so I'll end this. So there's a technical problem with on the side of Phoebe. And... This is our, this is the result of our tasks, okay? Our first is Jillian, followed by Arisgo, and third is Michelle Mendoza. Thanks everyone for participating in this quiz. Let's see how many got a perfect score again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of out of ten, but Phoebe here was not able to finish her work because of technical problem. But nevertheless, this is still a good result because the majority or the rest who did not get a correct complete uh, co complete score or a perfect score has only got one mistake or one error, okay? So with that, I would like to let us review the questions that you have a mistake, okay? Majority got the wrong answer with number six. Wait la. Okay, majority got the wrong answer here. What is the length of EC? Okay, EC. So AE is 13, therefore EC is also 13. Okay, I think it was not easier. A question number seven. Wait. Hmm. 
bear with me. Okay, this is question number seven. Okay, uh, it's all about the measurement of angle. What is the measurement of angle A? All you have to do here is to here add 47 plus 23 and that would be 80 and angle C is congruent to angle A. Therefore, angle A is also 80. Okay, so with that, let, have, let us have the summary of our lesson for today. And these are the different properties of parallelogram. Hindi ko na nalagyan ng, ng animation. Can you read it again? Phoebe, property number one. Okay, Royo? Yes po, ma'am. Property number one, what is it? Opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Property number two, Sky? Opposite angles of parallelogram are congruent. Okay, property number three, Samantha? Consecutive angles of parallelogram are supplementary. Number four, Jillian. The diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other. And number five, Andriana. Each diagonal of parallel parallelogram forms two congruent triangles. Okay, thank you. So are all these properties clear to you now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I hope you whatever you learned to do today will be applied to your given task, which will be posted in our Google Classroom. Okay? Just like what... Let me leave you with the quote of the day with before we end our lesson. According to Walt Disney, whatever you do, you have to do it well okay so just do your best in everything that you will do and you will find satisfaction whenever you do your best in every task that you will do for the week and for the rest of the day okay so with that i would like to thank everyone for joining me today and whenever you have questions or concern you can always pm me via messenger and I will always reply to you whenever I can, okay? And with that, let me also remind you that we will have a national simultaneous earthquake drill at 2 o'clock today. I hope you will participate in that, okay? So alam nyo naman na dapat we have always to be ready, lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon that hindi natin alam kung kailan darating ang ganitong mga pangyayari. Again, National Simultaneous Earthquake Drill later. Practice duck over and hold. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Nice. It was nice. Uh, it was nice meeting you all today. And I hope you have fun with our lesson. Okay, thank you, everyone. Goodbye and see you again next time. Bye. Bye po, ma'am. Bye po, ma'am. Thank you po, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul.